the biblical truth of our hymn today, Lord, I'm coming home. And I wish the hymnals included the story behind the hymn. Instead of putting a lot of these junky, worldly garbage hymns in it, maybe if, if they would have put a page to the history, and maybe I'm foolish, and I am. But I'm going to ask you for a moment before I read the story behind Lord, I'm Coming Home. What do you think? This hymn was composed by William J. Kirkpatrick. He was Irish. And the song inspired took place from a Methodist camp meeting. The old time Methodist camp meeting. I don't mean the modern garbage that happens today. And William Kirkpatrick was put in charge of the music, the hymns, the singing. And his job was to bring in the, the singers, the musicians, and everybody in there. And that's what he would do. He would select those people. And he noticed that one of his soloists would immediately, after singing, would, would leave. And he would not stay and listen to the sermon. He would get up and do the special and then leave. And Mr. Kirkpatrick was wondering, was he saved? I mean, you're in the church choir, you sing, so you, you've got to be, no, you don't have to be saved. So in prayer, one night, Mr. Kirkpatrick, from his heart, the Lord spoke to him. And he wrote the lyrics. For Lord, I'm coming home. And later that evening, Mr. Kirkpatrick gave the lyrics to this song to that young soloist. And the words of this song so convicted the young man that he stayed and he listened to that sermon. And when the preacher gave the invitation. That young man came forth and gave his heart to Jesus. And Kirkpatrick says the song is based upon the prodigal son that is found in Luke 15. I, I thought that was amazing. If you would print that, say, my eyes are seeming to come, you know, shut up. You know, instead of nonsense is in the hymnals, what if they printed a, a, little, a little story? Be more worth interesting. I wandered far away from God. Now this is about the prodigal son, but praying about that young man. And this was written before that night, so now I'm coming home. That man was, that young man was lost and dying and going to hell. Singing for the Lord. I'm in the choir. Don't mean you're saved. I go to church. Doesn't mean you're saved. And how God works. The prodigal son is out in the pigsty. Now I'm coming home, and he did. The paths of sin too long. <coughs> Excuse me, I tried. Lord, I'm coming home. Didn't say 
He doesn't say, Father, I'm coming home. He says, Lord. You know what, you know what he said? He said, I remember it's my father's house, but I'm beyond my father's care. If I were to return back and be one of my father's servants, so no longer the right of being my father, but the right to be my master, which people hate today. So instead of father, Lord, I'm coming home. I wasted many precious years. We don't know how long that guy was gone. We know he wasted his entire substance of money and whatever he would have to pawn on his worthless friends that weren't his friends as long as they were friends when the money was good and the drinks were on the house and the party. Now I'm coming. Now, you know, that, that prodigal son says, I'm going to my father's house. I'm going to repent. And he did. Now, he didn't wait. I'm now repented with bitter tears. Lord, I'm coming home. Crying is not a means of salvation. Repenting. And not for all people, but true repentance may bring tears. It brought tears in my eyes. And it wasn't for me tears of, of happiness. I'm saying it was tears of Man, how vile and wicked I am, and now I'm clean. I don't know how to describe the tears I've had. Probably for some, they're bitter tears. Probably for some, they're tears of joy. I'm tired of sin and straying, Lord. Living with the pigs, unclean pigs, swine, for a Jewish young man. Friends are all gone. He's in the... I mean, have you ever been to a bakery? There are two piggeries where I came from in Connecticut. One in Waterford and one in Montville. And I visited both of them. One of them was on the way to the, to the town dump. If you did not know the area and you said, Well, you know, on this road there's a dump. You would turn left into the pigsty, the piggery. No, this is not the dump. It's further down the road. Oh. Phew. Smells like a dump. Lord, I'm coming home. Getting out of the pigsty. Getting out of the filth. I mean, you know what was also in that mud? You know what the pigs eat when they exit? I've trusted thy love. I was just make sure I'm right. I've trusted thy love, the love of God. God's not willing that any should perish. For we love him because he first loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It is the love of God that he died on that cross. To give us the blessed hope. I've trusted thy love. I didn't say a prayer. I didn't trust what the preacher. I trusted the love of God. Believe thy word. There you go. You know you can't have repentance without the word of God. And even a gospel track, there's enough scripture in that gospel track for a man to get saved, but that's not done with movie. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing. The word. 
and it's you have to have faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God you got to listen to the word of God you got to see the word of God you got to take their their finger and have them read the word of God And then when you come to, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that, and tell them, say, instead of whosoever, will you put your name there? It's the word of God, and you better have the correct word of God. You say, well, I got a modern Bible. I don't know how anybody could be saved to have or written or revised the Bible into a modern Bible, King James Bible, and take it to a modern Bible. The revised, I don't know how you can be saved. There's a fine line. I'm going to say there's also that fine line of somebody who's got a perverted Bible that removes blood, that removes Lord, removes Jesus, removes the deity of Jesus Christ. You just better have a King James Bible. I mean, you're not going to go into a bank and do business with a bank when you got Monopoly money or the Game of Life money. You, you not go anywhere. Oh, you know, it looks like money and it. it's got number one, it's got five, it's got 10, it's got 20, it's got 50s and 100s. It, it, it's not the real thing. Thy word, Lord, I'm coming home. Without the word of God, without the word of Jesus, we would never have heard about the prodigal son. My soul is sick. Not, not the flesh. His eternal being of himself. The very him before he got right and repented that would have died and gone to hell. It, it's sick. It, it's it's ill. It's been violated with a virus called sin. And if I don't fix and get my diagnosis of my sin and get God's treatment alone for my sin... I'm going to face God's judgment and it won't be well. My heart is sore, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And that's the fine line of easy believism. Now, I'm not going to say you're saved or not saved. But easy believism or any believism, if it's not the heart of belief on the word of God, if it's salvation without the heart, it's damnation. If it's said a prayer with your head, you're not saved. Paul says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. However, whatever prayer invitation, if it was done with the heart, and you called upon the name of the Lord. You're saved. No heart. No salvation. My heart is sore. Now. Now is the day of salvation. I'm coming home. My strength renewed. He got better. Rebirth. My hope restored, now his hope is the blessed hope. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Never more to roam. I'm going to assume of the prodigal son once he got home. Unless his father sent him somewhere, 
I'm going to assume he stayed home. And if he were to have friends come, come on, let's go to, into town. I'll only go into town if my dad wants me to go to town. Or if my dad will go with me. And once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you may backslide. You may fall away. But you're still going home, capital H, to be with the Lord. To face wood, hay, and stubble. But you're going home. <clears throat> We're saved, faithful to the Lord. Say faithless to the Lord. If you're in the Lord. <coughs> excuse me. And you die. You'll be absent from the body. And present with the Lord. You don't go to hell because you've fallen away. You don't give. You don't go to hell because you weren't remaining good. If you gave your heart to Jesus and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you're going home. Now you may not please the Lord, or you may hear, well done. You may have gold, silver, and precious stone. Open wide thy arms of love and see those holy hands, and I mean holy as in righteous. And I mean holy that they're scarred. And when he, when he opens up those arms, you'll see the scar that's in his side. Where the blood and water pierced out. Lord, I'm coming home. And the Lord gave Mr. Kirkpatrick this Maybe he was reading about the. It didn't say he was reading the prodigal son, but he said the Lord gave him this. And that young soloist was on his heart in his prayers, but when he wrote this lyric, he gave it to the man. And these lyrics help planting a seed and the preacher watering it and God giving an increase. A new name written down in glory. 